Binge watch and learn on TRS Clips. A guy like me who's 30, yeah. who is starting to encounter some small aging related things, you mm. know, like mm. I'm not as strong or athletic as I used to be when I was 22. Mm. Is there room for me coming in and taking a treatment from you? Yeah. So we have, apart from, uh, you know, treating neurological problems, we have now over the past four years, uh, we are now working in the field of anti-aging. So I have a separate hospital that's an anti-aging hospital. Do people mostly come with skin and hair related things? No, no. So this is different. So that is, you know, that is like a spa kind of, you know, we, we don't do that. We do cellular anti-aging. So let me explain to you. Uh, like today, we have tools. A sim there's a simple blood test. You can just withdraw your blood. And, uh, okay, let me give you a little background. So our cells have something called genes. You have aware of genes? Chromosomes. They are like an X thing, all right? So the tip of the chromosome, like our nail, is something called telomere. Now, when we are born, our telomeres are at the maximum size. As we age, our telomeres become smaller. When your tel now, what the telomere does is it protects the gene. So, uh, you know, when the chromosome divides, it protects it, all right? So that gives you the ability to for your body to keep growing. Now, when it reaches its end point, that's the time the, the cell can't divide anymore. That's cellular death. So you can actually, with a blood test today, simple blood test, predict what your age will be. You can actually predict it. They, they measure the length of the telomere. Of the telomere. So you get a telomere length and the telomere length tells you what your cellular age is, not what your birth age is. Gotcha. Okay. Now, the advantage of that is, one, you know your cellular age. Second, if you do treatments, interventions, you can have a before and an after. One second. A cellular age will be, could be very different from your birth age. It is very. So I'll give you my own example. Okay. So I was, uh, I, I was, I'm 60. Last I was 60 and I, I did my telomere. I was the first. And it showed my cellular age to be 85. And I got a shock. I said, what? 85? I mean, this is, you've got to be kidding me. And uh, then I said, okay, I've got to do something. So I went into my own anti-aging program, which used hyperbaric oxygen, ozone therapy. I did this for 40 days back to back. This was basically- came out jacked like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. Not really. No, actually, it not a lot of things improved. Yeah? A lot of things improved. Okay. But most important, my telomeres in 40 days from 85 came down to 70. Okay. And in fact, the lab refused to issue the report after 40 days. They said, we can't give you this report because 40 days ago, you were 85. How do you become 70? You know, so the people will question the validity of our reporting. I said, no, I did all this. Then I continued my treatment for another 40 days and I brought it down to 60. So today, my cellular age is the same as my biological age using anti-aging treatments. Okay. Uh is it physically painful, the treatment? There's nothing. It's all totally non-invasive. It's There's nothing. There's no nothing. It's just pure oxygen therapies, ozone therapies, gut cleansing. Uh, something. It's just nothing. There is no intervention. There's no surgery. There is no, you don't take bone. There's no stem cells in this. This is non-stem cell related. Okay. So you, you just go into chambers and breathe the air. No, it's multiple. That's just one part. The, uh, the breathe the chamber is one part. There are many other treatments that go along with this, you know, so it's, but it's all nature-based. It's all what is called, there's no intervention. You're okay. not doing, uh, giving anything. So there was, I was, I was happy. So now my cellular age is, now the good news here is that this marking of the telomere shows you that your maximum, we can live up to 120. So beyond 120, your body cannot, our, our body is programmed up to a maximum of 120 because your telomere, so, so when they do these measurements, they do it on a gradation of 120. That's why it was 85 on a scale of 120 max. Sure. You understand? Yeah. So technically, if you could bring it down, I mean, the good news here is you could possibly live to 120. You could, okay. That's assuming you don't have a cancer or brain stroke or heart attack or an accident or something. So anti-aging is a fascinating, fascinating field. And there is an entire huge conference every year in Las Vegas. I, I attend it regularly on anti-aging. You've got some four, 5,000 doctors from all over. And there is a lot of excitement uh, in, in this field that you can actually slow down actually the aging process and uh, or at least where it's accelerated because of stress, lifestyle, other things, you can bring it under control. What will it manifest into on a physical level? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, suddenly you find your mind is clear. Okay, you're thinking clearly. You know what this brain fog, which you have very often. So the brain fog disappears, you know. Then you start finding yourself physically more active. You know, you find yourself... Uh, being able to energetically work for long hours, okay? 
then you find, uh, of course, at a cellular level, things are different. And also at a, like when you do, because along with the telomeres, we do everything else. We do blood sugar levels, cholesterol levels, liver function, renal function, hormones. We study, we have an elaborate set of tests that we do before and after. What we are finding, and we have, you know, this is going to get published in a paper. So we've just published this into a paper that all these things improve. So it's not just telomeres improve. Telomere is a manifestation that the rest of your body, it's a marker. It's mm. telling you that the rest of your body is improving. So we monitor everything. So, for example, I, I got my mom to do it. And of course, my, I mean, I, her thing after just a one week program, it reduced by one year. But I was happy. I, you know, technically, I've given my 88 year old mom one more year of life on whatever, it, you know, that's still a lot. And then, you know, so I, I my mom was among the first. Um, I, I had a, my, I've got a younger sister who had such severe knee problem. Remember when she came for the anti aging, she came on a wheelchair, okay, from Delhi. She came from Delhi, had to be escorted on a wheelchair. And after this whole program, not only she improved, she went to Vaishnu Devi and climbed, walked 14 kilometers up and down, 28 kilometers for somebody who came on a wheelchair okay, to walk 28 kilometers to Vaishnu Devi is like something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that was, and she says it to everyone. That happened because of the anti-aging treatment protocol she took at our place. So you are, the, your question was, how does it manifest? My real younger sister, who came in a wheelchair, walked 28. And you know, I, you've been to Vaishnav Devi? It's an uphill climb. It's a mountain climb up, mountain climb down. She could do that. So that is the difference. What will happen to me if I go through it? If you happen, like I said, see, there's, there's, you, you, you're you going to find your mind a little more active. You you Alertness. You know what is mind fog? You're too young to have mind fog. But as you grow older, sometimes there is a... You know what is mind fog? Have you heard that yeah, word? Yeah, It's like a, a brain fog. It's like, a, you know, dulling. So suddenly you find your mind sharper. And uh, now we, of course, uh, our program is for people 50 plus. Okay. Because if I tell a 30-year-old do anti-aging, they will say, what is wrong with you? You know, I, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people might would actually be open to it. Okay. Honestly. I think people might are very into biohacking. Yeah. But anyway, go on. Yeah, no, I completely agree that, you know, they, they actually say, I mean, there is, there is science to show the time to start anti-aging measures is at 30. Because that's when, you know, up to 30, your body is sort of peaking and then there is a slow decline, of mm. course, depending on your lifestyle, diet and a whole lot of other things. So that's the time to uh, start doing this. And uh, it, it doesn't have to be, you see, this is not something, it's not like you're, in a hospital and things are being done to you. This this is a part of, uh, because when you come out of this, you understand the value of natural systems of healing, okay. which I want to just elaborate in a very simple way. It's, so it's easy to understand. What are the things essential to life? Are the things essential to health and longevity? The first is oxygen. If you don't have oxygen for more than 10 minutes, you know, if you're strangulated, you will not survive more than 10 minutes. 80% of all diseases are because of lack of oxygen, right? So if you oxygenate your body, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be younger, healthier. So one of the simplest ways to do it is pranayam. So in yoga, even if you don't do the rest of the yoga, if you just do pranayam, why? Because when you do pranayam, you deep breather. See, you can't change the air around you. Can you change the air? I'm very happy to see plants here. I hope they're natural plants. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, because the more plants you have, the, what the plants do, they produce oxygen and they take your carbon dioxide away. But pranayam, what happens is, you see, normally you're, we are breathing now. We, we breathe shallow. In pranayam, you breathe fully. So if you can just do pranayam every day in the morning, that, that'll help. Now, of course, because, you know, so, okay, so look at nature in the jungle. What do you have? You have so much greenery and very few animals breathing it. Come bring it to the city. Suddenly you have so many more people breathing and so much less green. And whatever air is there is polluted, it's toxic, okay? So we are breathing, there's less oxygen and that too what is there is is, is polluted. So we have to, so our, the, our basis of our anti-aging is hyperbaric oxygen. So what is hyperbaric oxygen? It's basically right now we are breathing oxygen at one atmosphere pressure. This is one atmosphere. No, when you when you go into a chamber and you give oxygen, so at one atmosphere, see when you take oxygen, it goes into our lungs. From our lungs, it goes into our blood, and the blood carries oxygen to the whole tissue. Is that easy to understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the blood, we have two types of cells: red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. You may have heard of it. And then there is the liquid in the blood called plasma. So right now, what we are breathing, only the red blood cell 
carries oxygen uh, in what is called hemoglobin. You may have heard of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is the only thing right now which is taking the oxygen we breathe all over the body. Okay. The white blood cells have no and, uh, oxygen. The liquid, the majority of the blood is liquid. That is zero oxygen. But when you go in a chamber and oxygen is given under pressure, the oxygen enters the liquid of the blood. So your entire liquid of the blood is full of oxygen. And now when that goes, it goes everywhere to every nook and corner and it improves your overall functioning. Right? So that is, now if you can't, the ideal thing is for us to be, you know, to live in nature, to live in a place where there's more green. Then you don't need any of this. You know, if you're living in a place where there's all greenery, you don't need hyperbaric, you don't need any of this. But because we don't have that, we are now using modern technology to deliver what nature should deliver. So the first thing is oxygenation. So whether you, if you do pranayam, for younger people, hyperbaric may not, and a lot of sportsmen are taking, a lot of, uh, yeah. you see a lot of film stars and everybody's taking hyperbaric as part of anti-aging. So first is oxygen. Second thing for health is water. Okay. You cannot, if you don't have water for a couple of days, you won't be able to survive. So even people who are fasting, you know, they're giants who fast and all, they still have water. Almost 80% of our body is made of water. And one of the problems is we don't drink enough water. Okay, so we need to drink between two to three liters of water every day. Just doing that will seriously help us. So oxygen, which is important for survival. Second is water. Hydrate yourself. Drink as much water, you know, because somehow in today's life, you just skip it. You drink when you're thirsty. When you're thirsty and you drink, you're already dehydrated. So you should be drinking preventatively. Like the Chinese have a very nice system. Every one hour they have uh, Chinese tea. And the Chinese, my Chinese colleagues were telling me, it's not about the tea. It's that having every hour hot water. That's why they can eat anything. And the, they don't have so many diseases because they hydrate themselves. Do you think this hot water, cold water thing matters? Uh, I think hot water is better overall. Okay. Uh, overall hot water is better. So first is oxygen, second is water. The third thing you can't survive without is uh, food. So again, what is good food is natural food, whatever nature gave us. In fact, you know, today most, even you talk to cancer surgeons and the first thing they talk in their lectures is diet. You know, that diet has such an important role to play in malignancies and all diseases. And that is because we've shifted from nature. Like, you know, so you have to imagine life in, in a jungle and here, what do animals eat? Natural. There's nothing cooked. So everything that we cook and eat causes problems because of whatever is added to it. So a good idea is to, um, so I'm giving, see, I'm a surgeon. So I like to give practice. I don't give theoretical advice. I give practical advice. So practical advice is for oxygen, do pranayam. If you can have as many plants as you can in your house. And if you can't do that, take hyperbaric oxygen. This is practical. Sure. Water, very simple. Two to three liters of water, measure it, see that you drink every day. Third, food. Now, if I tell you eat only natural food, then you're, you know, nobody's going to follow it. Who can eat only fruit, salad? The natural food is fruits, vegetables, nuts. What a recommendation is to have at least three times a day to have natural food. And the rest of the time, have your regular cooked stuff. So just, you know, uh, like I and my breakfast will have only fruits and tea. You know, just, and then, then it's not a good idea to mix cooked and uncooked. Actually, ideally, you should have them separate because the digestive pathways are separate. So if you have three natural meals a day, the rest you can have whatever you want, uh, so long as reasonably healthy. So the next thing is uh, to deliver all this to the body, the, the circulation. Okay, your body, the blood has to circulate for oxygen and food. And because we've stopped exercising, because we've become sedentary, so circulation is slow. So even if you have good oxygen and a good diet, you know, but if it's it's not reaching the body, so for circulation, you need to exercise anything, half an hour, thirty minutes of a walk or a jog or a swim or a gym. Unfortunately, now for exercise, everybody's thinking of just a gym. You go to the gym and do workout. No, anything that keeps your circulation going. A simple walk is good enough. You could skip, you could dance. I mean, dancing is great. Anything that builds up, you know, increases your heart rate a little and gets your circulation going. Uh, so the next thing that's important is sleep because sleep is the time of housekeeping, all right? Both for the brain and the body. So a lot of our healing actually happens when we sleep all the wear and tear of the body when we are asleep because everything else is shut down, there is housekeeping happening, even in the brain. All that has happened in the day, all the stresses and the strains and the problems and the worries, the mind does housekeeping. You know, it sorts out things, it slots them, puts things in the right place and everything else. Now, if you don't have adequate sleep, what happens is not only is everything all, you know, a kitchery in the brain, but your body also doesn't heal. And the body has a great healing capacity. 
so uh, if so anywhere between 7 to 8 now ideal sleep is sleep when without a alarm you know without a alarm when you wake up naturally hmm. because the sleep has got to you know there's got a, a rem and a non rem there's got a pair sleep pattern so you you notice if you wake up to an alarm suddenly you wake up feeling weird and suddenly odd and everything so sleep is such an important part you know of um, of health uh, it's something we as doctors uh, don't practice this is the only part that we sometimes aren't able to practice because of our lifestyle but now if you can put all this together so simple ox- you know ox- see that your body is oxygenated see that your body is hydrated see that you have enough natural food along with whatever cooked food you have okay if you exercise just about 30 minutes a day keep your circulation going you know if you sleep 7 to 8 hours you know whatever your body needs you know, you're going to avoid 80% of your life's problems okay okay just mm-hmm. buy these simple and they all free of cost they don't none of these is expensive none of this cost anything because this is natural this is the way the body is meant to heal mm. now of course if you don't do all this there is medical technology to do it okay but you know you could do all this naturally i want to talk to you about the medical technology yeah. there's a conspiracy theory on the internet that yeah. says that billionaires of the world get yeah. blood transfusions where they yeah. use blood from pre pubescent children yes is i that know an, about that yeah. is that an actual therapy that's an actual therapy because those kids have highly oxygenized blood yes, absolutely so why that, do kids have highly oxygenized blood yeah because the younger bodies of course uh, what happens is that uh, you know it's like the body is a machine you see when your car is new okay you buy a new car Understood. you know everything is so much better as the car gets older it gets more carbonized things are so there's actually animal experiments there there are well defined animal experiments you take two rats okay uh you have an older rat and a younger rat and then you just switch the blood of both of them the older rat gets younger and the younger rat gets older just by transfusing the blood to each other right so there's actual scientific experiments and papers on that so that is actually correct i'm not sure about the ethics of that you know whether this is something you should do or should not do it's not something we practice but so, it is true that you know this this happens it's not a conspiracy theory it's very real so in the case of these billionaires mm. is the blood from the billionaires being sent to the kids no no that's that's that has been thrown away so in the research model they did it just to show that the reverse also works ah okay thank god <laughs> that would be messed up no, no, you can't give it they just throw their you know, they were throwing their blood away and who are these kids we don't know i mean we don't know who they are i mean human trafficking possibly i have no clue we 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 we've only heard about this but i know this not from humans i know it from laboratory experiments that okay. you know in our lectures and conferences we've actually seen data that actually shows that when you do this complete everything changes the heart liver you know the whole aging thing sort of reverses by completely alternating blood so i'm talking about laboratory work okay i've heard it happens in people but i'm not aware of it i've never heard of anybody who's taken this is it legal i don't think so wow <laughs> Okay, um, but maybe there's no law that says you can't do it. But uh, I don't think it's um, you know it's not something we've looked into ever. So, are there therapies that only the billionaires of the world can afford? Uh, no, I think all the therapies available today can be reached by the common man. Really? Yeah. Even on an international level. On an international level. So TRS Clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists. Make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our homepage, reading through. Venus.